last night I stayed up until 2 doing work for my job. Then I woke up about 6 hours later because construction. Speaking of my job though, I don't think I've really talked about it before, so let's do that. I was first hired three years ago by a grad student whose thesis thing, I'm not a liberal arts person, was to create a curriculum of math and science for middle schoolers. So my job was and is to grade pre and post tests to see if the curriculum actually teaches the kids anything. The way we grade these tests, however, isn't looking for whether they give the right or wrong answer, it's just looking for whether or not they're thinking or applying reasoning based on what they've learned in the curriculum. And this project has been funded by the National Science Foundation, so like, I don't know any of these kids, I don't know their faces, I don't know their names, I just have an ID number and I give them a score and it's real research. So I've looked at these kids' tests from when they were in 6th grade up to when they're in 8th grade now, and they've grown a lot in some areas, and they have not in others. They've done particularly poorly in some, and um, that's not really what you want when you're doing research. You want to see growth. You want to see that your curriculum is working. And I feel bad because the kids obviously have been taking tests for the past three years and they don't get grades for them in a lot of the cases. They just get handed these tests and their teachers are like, okay, yeah, the researchers at the university want to know your information, so do your best. And they just get nothing out of it on their end. So I understand why we don't always get the best responses, but it is frustrating as a researcher. So during this school year, I've been grading their 8th grade tests. So we did 8th grade biology, 8th grade chemistry, 8th grade physics, and some of the classrooms got to 8th grade earth science as well. So the 8th grade biology that I was scoring last night is talking about flowers. There are flowers that have alleles to be purple, there are flowers that have alleles to be green. If they have alleles to be green, they have to have two non-purple alleles. If they have alleles to be purple, they can have one purple allele because that one's dominant over the recessive non-purple alleles, or the ones that make them green. I'm sorry if I completely lost you there, but this is what I work with. So some of the kids understood some of the concepts. We gave them points for doing stuff like, did you note that some were dominant or recessive traits? Did you note that there were phenotypes or genotypes, or that your traits get passed down from your parents, or that both parents give genes to the child and it's not just one of them? Stuff like that. And some of the kids write the most ridiculous things, sometimes not even intentionally. And I love it when we have models or like diagrams, drawings involved with a question because they draw very silly things. They were talking about purebred flowers. So that flowers that were purebred purple would be purple, flowers that were purebred green would be green or non-purple. And I think they understood the concept, they seemed to, but how they spelled purebred was pure bread. <laughs> like a purebred flower. And one kid didn't even write pure, they just wrote bread. And I completely understand. If you just hear these concepts in class and you don't ever see them written down, you'll just hear pure bread and you're like, oh, I know those two words, pure and bread, and that's fine, but <laughs> it's just funny. And the nice thing about this job is it's entirely on the computer, so I can do it remotely from whatever location I happen to be in. That's what I've been doing during my past few summers. And then I'll also be continuing to do it this summer, through August at least, and that will soften the blow of not having found a job yet. And the reason I have this job is because of a thing called work-study, which you may not be familiar with if you aren't familiar with federal financial aid in the US for universities. It's basically the US government gives you a certain amount of money to pay for university, but you have to earn the money by having a job. And it's time for me to get back to work, so I hope you're having a good day. It's almost the weekend. Happy Vedim. I'll see you tomorrow.